Hello everyone. Welcome to MAP 206.5 or MAP 150, the online version. Both classes are going to be working in the same way, so this video applies to both classes, and the Blackboard pages look identical. First and foremost, I hope that you're all well and that you and your families are healthy and stay healthy. This first video is simply to help you navigate Blackboard and understand where everything is going to be posted. The next video, which will be the first that has course content, is going to be posted by Thursday afternoon. I expect the first few videos to be a little bit more complicated as we adjust to the new format, but hopefully by next week it'll be smooth sailing. Again, in this video, I'm going to show you where everything is in Blackboard. I'm also going to show you how you submit assignments and tests and how the grading system will work. This video is simply logistical, but in the future, they're going to be fascinating. So if you have children at home who have nothing to do, you can easily occupy them by making them watch these videos. Okay, first thing are the lectures. So over here on the left-hand side, you can see all of the different tabs. I've added two new ones. So the first one is online lectures and notes. The first thing that you're going to see here is the video. So it'll be this video. Right now it says test video for demonstration. It will be updated to the Blackboard instructions. If you click on this, it'll open up a new tab and you'll see the video and you can just play it. The videos are going to be posted in in order so that the most recent is on top. They're also going to be divided into folders based upon the topic that we're covering. So for example, in 206.5, we're going to pick up where we left off with polynomials and you'll see the first video posted there by Thursday. What you're going to notice is that under each video are going to be lecture notes. So for example, for this video, I wrote up all of the instructions that you're hearing about here so that you don't always have to re-watch the video if you just want to look something up. In future videos, it's going to be what you would see on the board if we were meeting face-to-face. -face. So it's simply the board work. I do strongly encourage you to find a way to listen to the lectures. The only reason I'm posting the lecture notes is because I know that some of you have difficulty with your internet or you're having issues with time and I want you to at least have access to something but I want to emphasize there is no way to master the material without listening to my te to me teach it okay I'm I'm not doing the lectures live so the reason for this decision is primarily because of spotty internet connections at my home and I'm sure some of you have very spotty internet connections as well. Also, I have multiple people in my apartment working from home, so trying to tape an online lecture can be extremely disruptive to them, and we have to work around each other's schedules. So the advantage to this format is that once you have the video, you don't have to worry that you're not gonna be able to hear me or that there's a lot of background noise. I'm going to be taping in a nice and quiet room. The big disadvantage to this format is the lack of ability to ask questions during the lecture. So one of the problems, I'm one of the ways I'm hoping to rectify this problem is to use the discussion board. So again, on the left, you'll see discussion board. You simply click on that and you'll see we already have the two discussions up there from earlier in the semester. Every time I post a new lecture, I will post a new discussion with the same title as the lecture. If we click on this discussion, this will help remind you how to use the discussion board. So if you have a new question about the lecture, you can cl click on create thread and you'll see something new come up. So if one person has a question about complex numbers, click on create thread and you can title it complex numbers or whatever seems appropriate. If you have a question about long division of polynomials and you don't see it already posted, then you can click on create thread as well. 
I strongly suggest that you all subscribe to the discussion so that at the end of the day, you can see all of the questions and answers that were posted. Now suppose there was a question on complex numbers and you have a related question or you think that you can answer the question. What you do is you click on that thread and what's going to come up is the student's question. So you can reply. If you click on reply, then there will, a place, there will be a place where you can add in text. For those of you who are more text savvy, there's also a math editor. And if you click on that, then you'll be able to put in fractions, exponents easily. If that's difficult and confusing for you, don't worry about it. Just trying to answer the question to the best of your ability using um, what you already know about text. Okay. Okay. Please, if you know the answer to a question, please answer the question. I will be checking the discussions on a regular basis just to make sure that there's no incorrect information up there or something if I think that something could be clarified or some or question has not yet been answered. Assignments. So this is going to work very similar to the way that it always has worked. You'll see the same tab posted and your assignments will be posted again, the most recent one being on top. The difference is, is that this will allow you to submit your assignments on Blackboard. So unfortunately, you're seeing an example of my spotty internet. If you click on the assignment this time, so instead of having a file posted here, uh, if you click on the assignment, two things will happen. One, I will attach a file, a Word file, or a PDF file, as I usually do, except this time you'll be allowed to submit on Blackboard. So you'll click on Write Submission, and that's where you'll be able to attach a document or simply write answers to the problems. I am not 100% sure if you write the assignment on paper, if you print it out and you write it on paper, and then if you take a picture from your phone, and you submit it that way, I'm not 100% sure if it works. So we'll have to keep testing it and we'll know by the end of the first assignment whether this is working. Over here, you'll see points possible as 100. Ignore that. It will be graded in exactly the same way as assignments have always been graded as complete or incomplete. And you'll see all of that information in the homework grade. Okay, nothing is changing. Your first assignment, the only change is that your assignments, there will only be one per week. They might be a little bit longer at times just because it's including more material. Okay. You'll also see over here, uh, tests to be submitted. So the tests to be submitted, you will get a week notice just as you usually did. And then in addition to that, uh, you will be notified of when I'm posting the test and when it's due. So I will give you approximately a five hour window. So it might be posted at 12 p.m. and then it will be due at 5 p.m. on the same day. If that window does not work for you, I know some of you may have changed your work hours, things have changed a tremendous amount and they're constantly changing. If the time does not work for you, then email me as soon as possible. And that way we can work around your schedule and come up with an alternative. Uh, in terms of submission of the test, it will work the same way as the assignments. And by the time that we get to the first test, hopefully we will have it figured out whether you can take a picture and do it that way. Uh, if you're having trouble submitting any of your assignments or your tests, you can always take a picture and email it to me. I prefer that you not doing that if at all possible so that I'm not getting uh, 60 emails. I don't want anything to just get lost in my email. I will let you know if I have a lot of missing uh, homeworks and we'll do the best that we can to uh, give you a chance to submit all of that. In terms of tests, I do expect that you'll use course materials to help you. However, the rest of it will be an honor system. 
I know that you care about your learning and I want you to do well. And I expect that you show me the respect of not collaborating with other people in the class and not using any apps that help you cheat or complete the problem for you. These tests are simply open book and the same thing applies to the, to the midterm and the final. In terms of participation, on Blackboard, I can see when each student logs in and what things they are viewing. So I'm going to know if you haven't watched any lectures or looked at any notes, and in those cases, it will hurt your participation grade. You can add points to your participation if you post questions or answer questions on the discussion board. During office hours, I will be available to answer your questions immediately. So I'll always be available to answer your questions through email, but during my office hours, my computer is open in front of me and you will get an immediate answer as the question comes in. If the question is too complicated to answer via email or you're having trouble understanding my response, then we could set up a Zoom conference, something which many of you may be familiar with from your other classes. My office hours will be posted. They will be Monday from 5 to 6 p.m., Tuesday from 4 to 6 p.m., Wednesday from 12 to 2 p.m., and Thursday from 5 to 6 p.m. As you can see, I'm holding more office hours because I do anticipate more questions. Other resources. So in addition to this class, there will be tutoring online on YouTube Live, you can, you can subscribe to the Help Your Math channel. Also, your supplemental instructor will be available and as soon as she finalizes her hours and how she will be working those hours, I'll post information about how to get help from her. As a final note, one, I am always available through email for any type of question or any type of problem that you're having. This is an extremely difficult time for everyone. I know that we can work together to make the remainder of the semester go as smoothly as possible from an academic standpoint. Unfortunately, I don't have any control over anything else. I am here to help you pass and do as well as possible, not to fail you. In other words, if you are putting time into this class, doing the assignments and asking questions, I will not fail you unless you show no understanding of the material. I will not penalize you for things that are completely out of your control. Students who fail are students who do not communicate with me when they're struggling. We may not be seeing each other face to face, but I'm here to help you and I will do my best to help you work around any obstacles that come up in the next few months. And I know there will be many. I only ask that you do not suffer in silence. Finally, please stay healthy and take care of your families.